Welcome to Tech Simplified, and my name is Sly Gittins, and today I'm covering the Microsoft Security Expert Certification, also known as the SC100 Expert Certification, and within this study guide, I'm covering what it is, who's it for, where do you go to study, and does Tech Simplified University have training for you, and the answer is that's coming soon, but the only way you find out more is watching this video to the end, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you soon. First thing first, you got to head over to sgtechsimp.com. Once you get to the home page, it's the first link in there. Access study guides. It's going to be the second one in or just look for the or the SC100 study guide. Let's click on that. Now that you're here, let's take a look at who is this exam for, right? Again, this is subject matter experts of Microsoft 365, right? Or oh, and Azure, so you want to have some experience. So if you're already taking the SC900, if you're taking one of the SC100, uh, I mean the 200, 300, or 400 certs, or the MS100, 101, or the 500 certs, or the AZ500 cert, you're going to want to take this one next to kind of get that expert three-star bad, right? Um, I'm actually in the process of taking it. Um, January 8th of this, I mean, I'm 2023. So this study guide, I made it for me, right? So I'm like, you know what? Let me make a video for everyone else because this is how I study. So I want to show you. So I'm going to pass it. So wish me luck on that, right? So this again is going to go over, you know, Microsoft's position and zero trust. Um, how do you secure Azure environments? How do you secure Microsoft 365 environments? So if you're a person who is configuring these types of environments on a day-to-day -day basis, you probably could take the exam, right? Go ahead and try to take it because you might already know enough information to, to be dangerous. For me, uh, my background is more M365. I did take the AZ500, so I can, you know, it's still some things I need to um, flesh out before I can take the exam. So what I did to start is take a few practice exams just to kind of see where I was and then study those areas to kind of refine my areas um, and my skill set. So... One thing I like to talk about with this exam that's different than the SC900 um, study guide that I created, there are prerequisites, and I mentioned it a little bit earlier. You need to take a, a, um, an administrator certification. So like myself, I have the MS500 certification. I'm using that as my prerequisite, and then I want to take the SC100. But if you have the 200, the 300, the MS100, the 101, all those certifications can be used as your prerequisite to pass this certification. And I highly recommend you do it. This certification is more of a, a, a jack of all trades or a generalist certification within security because it covers a little bit of everything. Whereas if you get like a MS, an SC200, it's more specific in a particular area, right? Um, so again, like I said in there, I talk about exactly, we highly recommend to have one of those other certifications just because, right? It's going to give you that information that you're gonna need, right? Um, in most cases, you would like to have hands-on experience within a lab. I mean, within the actual environment. In my case, my role, I don't deliver. I don't deliver it, deploy it. But I'm labbing every single day um, to kind of stimulate that environment and use cases so I can understand where to click um, for those type of questions on the exam. So the question you might be asking: Will Tech Simplified University be offering that training? The answer is yes. Um, I'm trying to get the, you know, the the training done. As you can see, I had to come in soon for the study guide, right? Because it wasn't done yet, but now it was out. Um, so that'll be up and this video will be there, right? Um, so you'll be able to see that video within the guide. Also, will I be having training? I'm a full-fledged certified training. Yes, I am creating that. The goal is to have that by the second week in um, January. So let's see if I can hit that deadline. But yes, I'm gonna have a full training for this as well. Um, what questions can you get? Well, the good thing is if you go click on that link, that's going to take you to the Mind Hub or the Measure Up area where you can get um, certified training from Microsoft themselves in terms of practice questions that stimulate the actual day of the test. So it's really close. I love those because it makes me feel like I'm in the exam. I'm sweating, feeling it, and see how I do under, under the, uh, those conditions. Um, you can also go to exam topics. There's some questions there as well. So again, I like to go into detail in my slides of who is this exam for because I think it's imperative before you 
take on a certification to make sure this is what you need to be doing because these take this certification is going to take at least 60 to 100 hours of prepping and I'm just saying that as someone who don't have um, every day inside the tooling experience it's going to take some time to learn um, luckily I know enough to that I can probably cut that down to 30 hours but again 30 hours of your life, you won't get back. So make sure you're the right person for it. And again, if you work within Microsoft environments and you're securing anything in terms of identity, Azure AD, um, if you're doing um, data protection, if you're doing defenders, or endpoint protection, or SOAR with our Sentinel products, this certification you definitely want to have, right? Um, and again, just to focus, this is an expert level certification, so expect it to be a little bit more challenging. You might not pass it on the first attempt, uh, but you know that shouldn't discourage you because it's supposed to be hard, right? Because this is the type of certification is. So make sure you bring your A game for it. So let's get right into what skills are being measured or the outline for this course, right? So these are the categories here, the five different pillars that you need to know, right? Zero trust, thirty percent to thirty-five percent. Governance and risk compliance, GRC, 10 to 15 percent. Security infrastructure, 10 to 15 percent. Um, data application strategy, right? 15 to 25 percent. Security best practices and priority, 20 to 25 percent, right? Those are the billing blocks, right? So what I like to do when I take my exams or practice exams um, is how do I score in those categories, right? Identity might be my best area, zero trust, right? That's a good look, right? Because that's the bulk of the, the, the exam, right? But if I score a zero on the governor risk compliance, what if this is actually 15% on the test that I take? Because it changes with whatever test that you receive, right? Um, I want to make sure I fortify those skill sets, right? So that's one thing I want to do. Um, like all my other um, security guides or just study guides in general, I took the measure up, I mean, the skills measure document, I clicked this here. So always check that if you're watching this a couple of months later to make sure that that skill guide matches my outline that is up to date. I try to do my best to keep it updated every few months, check it, um, put the new links in there. Um, just use the skills measure document as your Bible um, or as your guide for this exam because Microsoft changes it quite frequently because the cloud changes so frequently. But again, um, all the links are there. Um, what I try to do is I might go through a training um, and then when I go through the training, I take an exam, I see where I stand, and then I might go directly to an area that I'm having a problem with. Like the example I used earlier, if I'm struggling on the evaluate governance and risk compliance section, I'm going to go to this section and say, let me read through these individual um, pages to fortify that skill set. So again, um, this is one thing that's been really helpful for me is having this combo experience. So that is it. You know, I try to keep these short, sweet, and to the point. Um, the one thing I like to re-emphasize, how do you organize this? I leverage OneNote. OneNote is my um, book, my binder, um, with all of my resources and my preps um, um, strategy. I keep track of all my um, tests. I keep track of all my exam attempts, uh, my notes, my learnings, all in there because it makes it easier to go back and to check my knowledge. But you could use another tool, Asana. I used to use that before in the past. Very solid tool. Before that, I used Evernote, another good tool. Um, if you're on the phone like I am all the time, I use Apple Notes all the time or Google Docs. Um, just depends whatever you use, man. Um, the main thing I find a tool and stick with it to organize it and set goals. I like tools like OneNote because it integrates with Outlook. It also integrates with Task, Microsoft Task, so then I can add it to my calendar to study. Um, I think Asana is a little bit more organized when it does that. It's one tool that does everything, right, um, where you can add it. It's more of a project management tool, so it's a little bit steeper of a learning curve where if you got experience with Outlook, and um, task within Outlook is super easy to use. Uh, OneNote, um, I just, and it's also, I just have it for free, right? So I leverage that. Um, so again, that's it for me. Uh, make sure if you haven't watched SC900, watch that video. The AZ900, watch that video. My MS500, I got a ton of study guys. I got a lot of training coming. Um, again, thanks for tuning in. My, game, my name is Sly Gittins, and I'm out. Peace.